Welcome to Midweek Talks, where we help you follow Jesus and answer your questions in the middle of personal, social, and cultural issues. Welcome today. Our guest is Elizabeth Johnston. Elizabeth, thank you so much for being here. It's an honor to be with you. Elizabeth is the author of Not On My Watch. And if you haven't read this book, it is really a direct confrontation to the culture that we're living in. Go to Amazon and get this right now. You ask this question in your book. You say, a Christian went to jail that day in America for simply asking or acting like a Christian. Right. I was shocked. And you said, how did we get here? Right. Okay, let's start there. Yeah. How did we get here? Uh, we got there by thinking that we know better than God and by um, making sure that God's principles were removed uh, from, from our nation. And uh, if you step away from God's principles uh, and from His Word and the boundaries, the loving boundaries that He gives us in His Word, you reach a dangerous place. And, and so when, um, when same-sex marriage was ruled um, by the Supreme Court, unfortunately was, was ruled to, to be the law of the land, um, we then had, it was uh, definitely, potentially Christians were going to get persecuted for saying, I'm gonna stand, stand with God's word. And uh, we warned, we warned that this would happen um, oh, when the ruling, Obergefell ruling happened, in, um, I believe in 2015. And we warned that it would be full scale persecution eventually on Christians for taking a stand for God's word. And uh, man, it wasn't, it wasn't even a year before Kim Davis was placed in the situation. Do I issue this license as an elected official or do I follow Kentucky state law? And, mm -hmm. and Kentuckians had overwhelmingly said uh, no, 70% of Kentuckians had voted for uh, traditional marriage, right. for, for man-woman marriage, and said no to same-sex marriage. And so here she was, an elected official, and she was obeying Kentucky law, uh, and then there was this you know, decree from men in black robes that right. said it doesn't matter what Kentucky law is, uh, we are gonna force you to sign this uh, same-sex marriage license. And so I saw this thing going down on social media. I'm in, in the kitchen and watching this happen on social media. And when uh, the uh, same-sex couple, and by the way, we love same-sex couples. We love, um, love gays and I minister to them. I, it's one of my favorite things to do mm -hmm. um, and just love people. But we cannot embrace uh, certain ideas and certain sins as God's people. If we, if we truly love them, we wanna see, and this isn't just for homosexual sin, this is for any sin. Okay, heterosexuals are just as sinful as homosexuals. I think that's a good point to bring up because I don't think the church has dealt well with this mm -hmm. because Jesus, you know, was listed uh, in scripture as being the perfect balance of grace and truth. Mm -hmm. So here's what we are in America. We're either all grace yes. or we're all truth. Yes. And we don't really have the balance of grace and truth. And mm -hmm. so you are looking at this on social media Yes, and so they were, um, this, the LGBT activists were um, bussing in and flying in same-sex couples from around the country because there was nobody in Little Grayson, mm -hmm. Kentucky, who was actually trying to get a same-sex <laughs> marriage license. Sure. And they had found this woman who was just bold enough yeah. to not signed the marriage licenses and they wanted to make a national statement out of her. Of course, what many people don't know, a lot of these demonstrations are not from the local area. Right. They are paid to fly oh, in totally. and make it look, make it look totally. like Totally, and yeah. so these guys yeah. um, were being bussed in and we would even get word of when they, you know, we had heard when they were coming mm -hmm. in. And, um, and there she was in her office and she's like this Pentecostal, you know, yeah. no makeup, hair down yep. to here. Um, yeah. just very unassuming woman and she's standing there at her desk trying to do her work and there is a national media all in in the lobby of her office and the the same-sex couple comes in and they say under whose authority do you presume to not give us this marriage license 
and she said, she looked at them, you know, calmly but firmly, and she said, under God's authority. And I said, kids, pack your bags. We're heading to Kentucky. Yeah. <laughs> and literally, yeah. my kids packed their suitcases, and we drove to Kentucky to get there in time for her trial. I was not about to let my kids miss this opportunity to watch in living mm. color. How often do you get to watch in sure. America a Christian be persecuted for their faith? I was so inspired by this bold woman of God. I said, my kids are gonna watch this. And so that's what we did. We headed down and we thought that Kim, I mean, worst case scenario would lose her job, but she got put in hand and ankle shackles and mm. hauled off to jail that day and uh, and was in jail for six days, I believe, and might have been in jail a lot longer had we not hit hit the streets mm -hmm. and done the activism that we did. And my kids and I ended up uh, staying a lot more than three days. We were we were there or one day. We were there for three weeks, um, and we hit the streets and we were in churches and we were at ball games, passing out literature, and we were holding signs on the sides of the road, just advocating for get Kim out of jail. Kim's keeping the law. You know, why is Kim in jail mm -hmm. <laughs> when she's obeying Kentucky law? And we just kept the story alive and the national media would just go follow us everywhere we went. We would go outside her office uh, place and we would we would um, um, advocate for Kim and encourage uh, the uh, those who had the power and ability to do something about Kim getting Kim out of jail. And we kept the story alive. And then Mike Huckabee planned this huge rally and Ted Cruz came down and there were 10,000 people that day there. I mean, this, the city had to shut down. The little community mm -hmm. had to shut down, schools closed because there were so many Christians saying, hey, we just wanna be able to obey God in America. We wanna be able to, um, to follow our consciences and uh, we, can't, we can't sign our name to, to this. And uh, so 10,000 people were there and my kids watched Kim Davis walk out of jail with her hands lifted yeah. high to heaven, worshiping the Lord. And uh, it, was a, it was a great day and it was three weeks that my kids will never forget as we said, you know what? Uh, Christianity isn't just about sitting in, in pews and listening to flowery sermons. The Bible says we're to be salt and light in our culture. And sometimes being salt and light means you're gonna have to say, I can't sign that. God won't honor me doing this. And sometimes salt, if it's put in a wound, it, it doesn't feel good. It stings. Uh, and Christians need to be willing sometimes not to always have to feel good. Right. Uh, do you think that this is an indication of things to come? If Christians will stand up, do you think more and more things like this are gonna start happening? Absolutely, I mean, we, we watch what happened though after um, that whole ordeal with Kim Davis. Uh, how long was it before Obama issued his transgender bathroom directive? Yep. And then Target opens up its you know bathrooms and says we're gonna have the transgender bathrooms. And so now, then what we're dealing with this was the slippery slope we warned about, and it all started with saying God's word doesn't apply to marriage. Well, you know, there were people <laughs> in the church when all of this started saying it's not going to go down that way. It's yeah. not, not going to get worse. It's just this. Right. But we all knew that wasn't the case. So then we have 200-pound men who want to claim they're females mm -hmm. can access the shower rooms, locker rooms, YMCA shower rooms yeah. of my little girl. Right all because they say they're a female. Guys, when we, when we leave God's word and his principles, there is no end to the insanity that we will then see. Right. And, and the Bible says that when the wicked are, are leading, uh, the people mourn. But when the righteous are in authority, when the righteous are reigning and ruling, the people rejoice. Yes. And so there are so many spheres of influence that we have as God's people and uh, we need to make sure that in the culture that we are active, that we are running for office, that we are making sure that the people aren't groaning under wicked leadership, um, which we very well may be right. looking at over the next four years, mm -hmm. that we want the righteous reigning, not because we love one type of person over the other, but because when God's principles are honored, 
the people will rejoice. When his principles are not honored, the people will mourn. It's, it's in God's word. If we believe God's word, then we understand that to be a, a true saying. You mentioned in your book about courage. Where is the courage of the American church? Mm. I think that Christians are more concerned with being popular than with pleasing the Lord. We've become like the, the finger in the wind politicians, whatever, mm -hmm. whichever way we see the wind blowing and the current um, popularity contests going, we follow that instead of staying anchored in what does God say? What is his heart on this issue? Uh, if we would stay anchored in his word, then the Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. And uh, we won't find it that challenging to be Daniel or to be Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or to be the Hebrew midwives that said, no, I will not um, kill these children. You know, we are living in a day and age when we are gonna have to make decisions like this. And do we believe the God of the Bible? Do we serve the God of the Bible? Or is this a popularity contest? And for far too many Christians, there's just, I, I believe, um, no true salvation. Um, there's, there's church attendance, and uh, therefore God uh, has not transformed the heart, and, and Christians aren't truly as bold as a lion. The reality of that, then, is that the name Christian is just another cultural term to refer to somebody that has some type of religion. Mm -hmm. um, if that's the case, then, then the numbers of people that are actually evangelical or Christian in America is not near as many as the Bible would really indicate somebody was that lifestyle, that, like a, a Christian. And what I'm noticing is that people that really take a stand, God will back them. Oh, yes. Will and, he ever. And power, supernatural <laughs> power will come. Will he and ever. It, I love a great underdog story. I've, yes. Um, and, you know, that's what, wow. Um, our God is the God of the underdog, is he not? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I'd love to share a story if yeah. I could. Um, for instance, um, I learned a couple of years ago that Teen Vogue magazine, mm -hmm. um, which is supposed to be a, a magazine for teens about right. fashion, right. basically. They, <laughs> was, they left the fashion they realm did. a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's a magazine that's been in print since I was a little girl. Yes. I can remember seeing it yep. as a little girl. I'm 45 years old. Yep. And uh, it, it, they were teaching kids how to sodomize one another. Yes. And I was just floored. I saw this article and I thought, oh Lord, what, what has happened? They are pandering obscenity to mm -hmm. minors. This is, this is illegal. Yes. These editors, they're not being held accountable. What, what can we do? Our poor children. Yeah, nobody was saying anything. No, no. I mean, they, they beat their chest right. and they fuss and they, they complain, yeah. but they do nothing more right. than that. And so um, I was out to dinner with my family and came home and I just couldn't get this off of my, my mind. I was so grieved. And so we built a little bonfire in the backyard mm -hmm. <laughs> and I filmed myself with my iPhone. No, no, yep. no special technology or anything. Two minute video, had no idea what I was gonna say. And I filmed myself burning a copy of the Teen Vogue magazine and I said, this is trash. This is obscenity. And what are you gonna do about it, parents? Are you just gonna sit there and allow this to happen to your children right. that God gave you? And I said, we need to get into these stores and these libraries and demand that the managers pull this smut from the shelves. I didn't know if anybody watched this thing. Yeah. I thought it was kind of cheesy or whatever. 16 million video views later, mm. we had launched Operation Pull Teen Vogue. People in droves were going into the stores and showing the managers this article and saying, remove this immediately. Never take Teen Vogue magazine again. Yeah. I was ruthlessly mocked. I was called a Nazi book burner. I was told that I was actually giving Teen Vogue more advertisement than they had had in years. I was only helping them. Five, that's the narrative. Yes, that's, that's always what the they do. That's always what they the do. Narrative. I could never tell you the things that were said about me yeah. for the next couple of months. Well, for those that are wondering, um, you have been called a redneck Barbie, <laughs> a blonde Hitler, an arrogant, hypocritical cow, a blight on humanity, a gun-slinging evangelical loon ball, a demented, 
dandruff eating mediocrity afflicted neophyte with glacially slow <laughs> cognitive faculties. I'm like, how do, you, how do you deal with that? Well, because of what is getting ready to take place here. Yeah, well, here's what happened. Five months later, a publication owned by a massive network, a publishing company out yeah. of New York City called Condé Nast. Yep. They carry Vogue, they carry Glamour, uh, Brides Magazine, yep. all these magazines, and those magazines are still in print, paper print. Five months after we burned the magazine and launched Operation Teen Vogue, Teen Vogue went out of print. They printed mm. their last print edition. We destroyed that obscenity, that obscene publication. And I don't say that with any shame, guys. I mean, as Christians, we need to grow, grow some, some, some courage. Backbone, yeah. yeah, we need to grow some backbone, yeah. a little bit, of, little bit of hair on our chest, okay? Yeah. Um, and, and realize that, that, you know, God said, who will rise up for me against the evildoers and who mm -hmm. will stand for me right. against the workers of iniquity? You know, we're not standing against um, physical people, but we are standing against their ideologies. We are standing against their agenda to sexualize our yes. children. And that's really what it's about. Yes. It's a, it's a shifting of identity. Yes. Uh, it's not a God-given identity. Right. It is a, actually a demonically inspired identity. Yes, it is. And so I don't um, hesitate in any way to thank God and give glory mm. to Him that yes, we did destroy that publication. Yes. They, they were breaking the law and they should have been destroyed. And that's what it looks like, unfortunately, in 2020 sometimes to be salt and light in our nation. We need to protect our children. Um, in public schools, they are peddling pornographic sex education yes, they are. to your children. I just saw some of this stuff recently. I'm under like, your noses. Yes. And too many Christians yep. are not aware of this. Mm. And so, uh, you know what? When it's dark, sometimes you got to turn on a light. And turning on a light and exposing what's taking place, they want it to stay in the dark. The, the yes, radicals on the left, they want all this to stay in the dark. And we, it's our job to turn on the light at times. That's what it means to be a light. And you won't always be popular doing that. But mm. let me tell you, the God of David and Goliath is looking. The Bible says his eyes roam yes. across the earth, looking for someone with a heart pure toward him. And he's looking for someone to fight for. What do you say to those people, those Christians? We're just supposed to preach the gospel and not get involved in a culture war. Right, well, I would say that that's why we're in the war that we're in right now, and that's why we appear to be losing uh, the war right now, is because for 60 years, um, ever since the, the sexual revolution, the, the hippie movement, uh, the removal of prayer from mm -hmm. school, um, and the 10 commandments and whatnot, Christians have been waiting for Jesus to come back and rescue right. us and yeah. saying, oh, he's coming. Oh, look how bad it is. Oh, he's coming. Well, you know what? It's 2020 and yeah. he still Almost hasn't, 2021. he still hasn't come. Right. And what would have happened during those 60 years if all the millions and millions of Christians inhabiting pews on Sunday morning had been salt and light in their culture, had been running for office, had been peacefully praying at the abortion clinics mm. and saying yes. no to the modern Holocaust. If we had been doing that for those 60 years instead of waiting for Jesus to rescue us, we might be living in, in a different situation. I know we'd be living in a different situation right now. So it's very important that we not just do one or the other, but that we all, there's plenty of us, guys, there's plenty yeah. of us in the body of Christ for some of us to be engaged in politics, for some of us to be engaged in the Board of Education, in your city council, for us to be active in homeless ministry, abortion clinic ministry, yes. uh, um, so many different ways that we can be the hands and feet of Jesus. There's no lack of us. There's what, like, how many millions? I mean, some say 60 million, 60 some million say 80 million. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, Christians who claim to love God and love the principles of his word. If we were all pulling our weight and doing our part, uh, we, would, we would not be sitting here in the situation we're in right now where we're begging to open up the doors of our churches. Right. So let's look at what God's people did in his word. Yep. Did the Hebrew midwives obey Pharaoh? They did not. 
when he said, you're gonna have to obey the law and kill the, the firstborn. They did not. Did Daniel obey the law when he, when the decree came down? It was a decree from the leader, just like we have decrees now to shut our churches. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a decree that Daniel could not pray to his God. Did he obey the law? He did not. He did not. In fact, he swung open the window. That was almost a blatant in, a in bit your of face. A, in a bit of a nanny nanny boo boo, yeah. I'll show you. That's correct. And yeah. he prays boldly to his God. Did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego obey what they were told by their ruler? They did not. They did not. The Bible is replete with testimonies and not just the Old Testament, the New Testament. The apostles were told to no longer preach about their God. Did they obey that? They did not. They said, I must obey God, and I at times will not be able to obey man. And so if there is any people who should understand that when the law of the land says, I cannot obey my God, I must obey my God, it is Christians, those who claim to follow the Bible. Our own Bible is replete with stories of people that had to rise up and say, I'm sorry, I am a law-abiding citizen, but when you ask me to disobey my God, I cannot do that. And that when we're asked to not obey God, to disobey God, we do not acquiesce, just as Kim Davis could not acquiesce when she was asked to issue a marriage license to people who were not doing something that God calls marriage. And so, uh, again, it didn't matter if, if it doesn't matter if those who are in leadership, whether that ends up being Joe Biden or President Trump, um, what, what they are decreeing and saying is the law of the land, uh, whether they were placed there by God or not, all that we have to be concerned about is that we honor the Lord, and that we obey the Lord. And so, uh, to me, that, that's just highly complicating um, something we don't is, we don't always we don't always understand the right, sovereignty and that's the of God. Argument that people are trying to make. Yeah, and it and it really is a it's uh, an excuse. It's, it's an a excuse, cop out. Right. It's a cop out for a lack of courage. Mm. So those individuals that are in the body of Christ today that really want to do something, sometimes they wait for somebody else to tell them to do something. Mm -hmm. You didn't wait for anybody to tell you what to do. You just said, I have to do something. Talk to us for a minute about doing something yourself and not waiting for an organization, a church, mm. or somebody else to move you. Mm -hmm. If you see an opportunity, don't wait for somebody to say it's okay. Because some of the things that you've done have actually given permission to other people. Say, wow, one person can yes. do that. Maybe I could do that too. Exactly. Uh, well, before David did what he did with Goliath, you know, he was being criticized yes, and mocked and told, oh, you can't do that. You know, you don't have, um, you don't have what it takes or you don't have the big organization. Right. And I've done things that I, um, anyone watching who knows how to do these types of, of things would say, you didn't have what you needed. I, I right. understand that. But, uh, but one person plus God is a lot more than an organization mm, right. with the funding of millions right. who doesn't have God. Yeah. All you need is the Lord to fight for you. And uh, God honors people who, um, who run to the battle and who have pure hearts. Can you say that again? D just say that one more time because people right now um, are just like mm -hmm. settling down and saying, let's just put up with what we got to put up with mm -hmm. until it's over. Well, we don't know when that's going to happen. So say that again to encourage people what to do. God honors people who run to the battle. He's looking for that, that heart and that courage, that David courage, that Deborah courage that says, it's time, rise up and run into battle. Uh, for instance, when um, and, uh, Governor Cuomo, mm -hmm. uh, who's been in headlines a lot recently in New York, uh, signed the infanticide legislation yes. in 2019, mm -hmm. January 2019, that said it was okay to kill babies all the way up to 40 weeks for any reason, basically. The nation, Christians, were just 
Yes. I've never seen believers care so suddenly about the pro-life issue. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I had been in the pro-life battle for 20 years already. Right. It was already my, my heart. And yet I was watching this response from God's people and I was like, oh wow, they need to be led into battle. Mm -hmm. They're hungry. They're concerned. They're finally awake. The mm. sleeping church is awake to the cries of these mm. unborn children. They need to be led into battle. What are we gonna do? And I was looking around at the really big, well-funded organizations and waiting for some kind of organized response uh, because I don't have any money or any organization right. basically. And no one was doing anything right. in response. And so I said, let's do the day of mourning let's organize a day of mourning because this is the only response right now. As Cuomo, Governor Cuomo and the radical feminists light the World Trade Center up with pink yes. in celebration of infanticide and of mass murder of babies, unborn babies, the only response as God's people that we can have is mourning, is humbling ourselves, putting mm. on metaphorical, sackcloth yes. and ashes and saying, God, will you forgive us for this bloodshed, for this child sacrifice? So that's what we did. We had three weeks. I knew that everyone would forget about it if we didn't do it immediately, right. fast. Uh, and and th that's, just, that's just human nature, unfortunately. And so in three weeks, we organized an event right there in Albany, New York, where the legislation was signed and applauded Hmm. right there in the state chambers. We With were smiles and laughing. Oh, and uh, you know, just didn't have any funding, didn't know how this would happen. Ended up promoting this repentance ceremony that we were doing on Fox and Friends, hmm. Glenn Beck, The Blaze, 700 yep. Club, all over the nation, all over the world. People learned eventually in just three weeks time about the day of mourning. And we had a solemn assembly, as the Bible tells us in yes. Amos, to call a solemn assembly a fast. And we asked the entire nation to wear black, to fast and pray with us, and to repent for the sin of abortion on that day. We had almost 4,000 in attendance in Albany, New York, in the mm. dead of winter in February. It's cold in New York Brutal. In winter. In the dead of winter, people were flying from California mm. to be anywhere near this solemn assembly. It was the most powerful thing I have ever been involved in. And we had 40,000 people watching all at the same time mm. via live stream. And again, no organization. This thing, I mean, we just followed a cloud. The Holy Spirit provided. Money would drop into the account right in time before we had to pay a $10,000 bill to the venue or a mm -hmm, $15,000 right. bill to the live stream. Yeah. It was miraculous, manna from heaven. And it was just because we ran to the battle and said, God anoint us. I'm telling you, whatever that thing is that God has placed on your heart to do, you know what it is. I don't know what it is. It's between you and the Lord. Mm -hmm. Whatever that thing is, just run to the battle cover yourself in prayer and cover yourself in the blood of Jesus and you'll be amazed what God will do through you. I think people need to hear that because we have sort of stood back in the shadows and let things happen. We hope, well, maybe somebody will do something. Maybe somebody will step up. And God is really saying, if you're the one saying, I wish somebody would step up, maybe it's you yeah. that God wants to step up. You will inspire so many people with your little step of faith, with your step out of that boat onto the water, uh, you will inspire so many people. It's, it's a wild ride, uh, but I wouldn't trade that ride for, for anything. There's nothing like watching thousands, tens of thousands of people being inspired by your actions, um, starting movements that are, you know, repentance based, yes. that, that uh, give God the potential to bring revival, spiritual revival to our nation. Uh, this, is, this is what we need a, a lot more of today. And as you talk about repentance and revival, those are really the key issues. Mm -hmm. Because if we believe that if my people, mm -hmm. the world is not going to repent, Right. until the church does. And the church is very good at yelling about the sins of the world, but not dealing with their own. Yes. And if my people, the Lord promised us. He did. He said he would heal the land. It's like an equation. 
It's like, I, he said, if you'll do this, I will do this. Well, guess what? Our land is not healed right now. Right. So what's the if that we need to go back to? If mm. my people who are called by my name will humble ourselves and pray and seek my face and turn from our wicked ways. I know one thing, there's a lot of wickedness in God's house. We are yes. not turning from our wicked ways. That is true. The filth we're watching on TV, the yes. sins we are indulging in, our yes. hearts are not pure toward Him. We've not turned from our wicked ways. We are still indulging, thinking that no one is seeing what we're doing. And because of it, our land is not healed. Because of it, we have uh, just the most division that we've ever seen in our nation and we have rioting and looting in the streets we have unrest uh, we have churches closed down right now so man god's people we cannot get on our face enough we cannot repent enough uh, we cannot do business with god enough in this critical hour right now if we are serious about wanting to see revival uh, judgment starts at the house of god uh, we're we're where the buck stops first and if we'll get our act together we know it's like it's as sure as an equation two plus two equals four god will heal our land you know there is a very real call of the holy spirit to repentance yes and we like to talk about the sins of the world as i mentioned but god is trying to deal with his church yes and if the body of christ and if those of you listening today will grab a hold of what God is trying to do in your life. You're struggling with issues. You're struggling with stuff. You're struggling with sins, habits, addictions. I promise you, if you will humble yourself before the Lord and really come before the Lord and say, God, help me. I'm sorry. Mm. Rescue me. The Lord will come with His ability, and only the Lord can do it. Mm -hmm. The Lord will come with His ability to free you from the struggles that you are in and then use your life for His honor and His glory. Amen. We are passionate about revival. Yes. Because in the histories of spiritual awakenings in this nation, it is spiritual awakening that has kept us from going the way of other nations. The Always. darkness we would live in right now if it weren't for the Great Awakenings. People walk around with such a lack of understanding about the light that we live in on a daily basis because of the Great Awakenings. Problem is, people want to be a part of the revival and they don't want to do the work to get to the revival. In order yes. to have the Charles Finney moments, you got to have the Father Nash moments. Correct. The, the men that in the secret place paved the way through intercession and fasting and sacrificing major yes. sacrifice yes. for years of their lives. Yes. We don't want to be Father Nash. And so guess what? You're not going to get your Charles Finney revival. You know, I was reading about Elijah today actually, and it caught my attention again of how often he prayed. Mm. And I recognize one more time that Elijah was a man of prayer, but James points this out. Elijah was a man with the same passions temptations, struggles, issues that everybody else had, but mm. then it says, but he prayed, mm. and he prayed again, mm. and he prayed again. And if we will come before the Lord and pray and pray again, mm -hmm. and pray and pray again, we will see a move of God, I believe, across this nation like we've never seen before, but God has called the church right. to do this. Somebody said to me one time that it's over for America. It's mm. never over until the people of God declare it's over. Mm -hmm. Because God is not waiting on the world to make a decision. Right. He's waiting on the church to make a decision. Mm -hmm. I want us to pray. Mm -hmm. I just feel like we need to pray about revival and awakening uh, in this nation. Mm -hmm. And would you just take a moment and, and look into the camera and would you lead us Sure. in praying for revival in this nation, purity and the power of God and repentance. Mm -hmm. just, just lead us. Yes, yes. Oh, Lord, we love you. We love you. We're so amazed by you. You're so beautiful. We thank you for the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice that you've made for us to pave the way for us to have eternal life. We thank you for this nation and the sacrifices that were made so that we could worship you freely. We honor those who made 
those sacrifices for us. We thank you so much that you have allowed us to live in America, the land of the free and the home of the brave. And God, we are greatly concerned about what we're seeing right now. Our hearts are broken yes. for our nation. Our hearts are broken over the freedoms that we are not enjoying right now, that we so took for granted and trampled on just a year ago mm. when we could have been in your house and we were asleep at mm. home and we were not in your house and not in your presence, Jesus. Lord. And we were not gathering with your people. We repent for that, Lord. We are sorry for the apathy and for the things that we have taken for granted, Lord, the freedoms that we've taken for granted. We ask you to forgive us, Lord. And there's so many things that we need to repent for right now, Lord. We need to repent oh, for Jesus. turning a blind eye, oh God, at your unborn children that are being slaughtered. We ask you to forgive us, Lord. We need to repent for the sexual sin in our lives, the sexual sin we've allowed in, uh, in the, the television and in our phones, oh God, and the entertainment that mm. we have engaged in, God. We've not had your heart. We've not been yes, concerned Lord. about what you're concerned about, Lord. And we ask you to forgive us. In Jesus' name, Lord, we ask you to wash us clean of the sin and the apathy yes, in our own hearts, O oh God, yes, God, and that you would forgive us, Lord, and that you would fill us with your spirit and fill us with your courage, God, to do the things that you've called us to do, to rise up and to be salt and light and to be your voice and your hands and feet in the earth, Lord. Save us, God. Rescue us. We pray for revival in our land. We pray for our leaders, God. We yes. pray for President Donald Trump. We pray for Vice President Pence. We pray for all those who are advising them, oh God, that they would have the spirit of knowledge and wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might would rest upon them. That your very spirit would rest upon them, oh God, and that they would be able to rule with righteousness in Jesus' name. That they would be able to rule in a way that ushers in freedom, that ushers in spiritual awakening in this nation. Yes, we don't believe that it's either or. We don't believe that it's just your people. We believe that all of us need to be working in concert together, oh God, so that we could have another great awakening in this nation. Help us, Lord. Yes, Lord, forgive us, wash us, deliver us, O oh Lord. We know we deserve tyranny. We know we deserve to have the wicked ruling yes. over us, God. And we just pray, oh, Lord, God. that you'd let your mercy triumph over judgment. I want to pray for everyone listening, God. I want to pray against the, the spirit of discouragement, Lord, right now in Jesus' name, that you'd wash us of this discouragement, God, and that people would find their rest and their hope in you. And that just as you, Jesus, had to do more than, than pray in the Garden of Gethsemane, they would then get up from that moment of prayer and that they would walk toward whatever you have for them. Just as Jesus prayed and then he got on a cross <laughs> and he did the most amazing, epic thing that's ever been done in the mm -hmm. history of mankind that rescued us and that gave us eternal life for which we are eternally grateful. Help your people. Yes, pray. Yes, be in the secret place, but then rise up and walk the road that you have told them to walk. I pray for an infusion of boldness mm -hmm. in your people right now. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 We are calling you into your identity in Christ. Mm -hmm and the will of God in your life. Those of you listening, you have great, great purpose mm -hmm. that God has given to you. Maybe you're listening right now and say, how do I even have a relationship with Jesus? Mm -hmm. It's this simple. Say, Jesus, I turn from my sin. I wanna know you. Help me to live for you. Show me what you want me to do. Let my life please you. You pray that simple prayer. It's a prayer of repentance, turning from sin and turning toward Christ. That simple prayer will put you on a walk with Jesus and your life will never be the same. Amen. Our guest today has been Elizabeth Johnson. Elizabeth, you're awesome. Oh, thank you. Really, that was good. really, thank you so much uh, for being here today and thank you for your work in this nation. 
And our prayer today is that as individuals have listened, they will be inspired to get up and do something. Elizabeth is the author of Not On My Watch. If you have not yet read this book, go to Amazon right now. Purchase this. It is really a prophetic declaration of what we need to do in this nation today. Thanks so much, Elizabeth, and thank you for being part of Midweek Talks today.